See, Christianity got you thinking that the whole law is wicked. Y'all heard Geno Jennings? He said he found fault with the law. That's what he said. Most time when a preacher justified more than one wife, just to show you he got him. Oh, yeah. Amen. A man can have more than one wife today. What use is getting married? That's right. That's, That's right. right. A man can wake up and say, you know what? I'm getting another one. There's a man, son, I think his name is uh, Dowie something, yelling about me in America. He says there's nothing wrong with having two wives, three wives, and four wives. Mm. He said the doctrine that Pastor Jennings is teaching that there's only one wife, he said that's a false doctrine. And he got over social media, he's supposed to be a pastor, and cussed me out. Mm. I heard what he said. He said he found fault with the law. I said, whoa. I said, man, this is a false teacher. See, there's a spirit in that man. Yeah, it is. That's right. Oh, rich of God. Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. Says what? Now I beseech you, brethren. Romans 16 and 17 says what? Now I beseech you, brethren. Now. Amen. I beseech you, brethren. Mark them. What? Mark them. Mark them. Pay attention. Which cause division. Which cause division. And offenses. And offenses. Contrary to the doctrine. Contrary. Contrary. Opposite. From the doctrine. And what else shall we do? Which ye have learned. Which ye learned. And avoid them. Let them in your pulpit. Avoid them. Fellowship with them. Avoid them. No, just water down their belief because he's on schedule to preach for the pastor's anniversary. Avoid them. Did you hear this is plain? Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them. Mark them. Which cause divisions and offenses. Mark them. Mark them. There ain't no man that believe in divorce should be baptized in nobody in the name of Jesus Christ. There are so many dynamics to divorce and remarriage. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 through 11 says, Now to the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. A wife is not to depart from her husband, but even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. Now, this commandment is for those who have no reason whatsoever to divorce his or her spouse. This includes irreconcilable differences. Why? Because the bloodlines have been compromised ever since the fallen angels made it with women. Nevertheless, we live in a generation where the woman files for divorce 80% of the time. So if she files for divorce, or if the man files for divorce, such is not in bondage in these cases, according to verse 15. Verses 12 and 13 emphasizes if the unbelieving spouse is willing to live with the believing spouse. This is why God commanded us not to be unequally yoked. Because most people are subject to verse 9, which says it is better to marry than to burn with lust. Let them marry. It's talking about the unmarried. But Pastor Geno Jennings does not address these variables. It ain't no man that believe in more than one God should be baptized in anybody Anyhow. in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe there are no apostles now? Right. That man should not be baptized in nobody in the name of Jesus Christ because he is contrary to the doctrine. Not only that, he's not a disciple. That's right. Okay. So often he accuses preachers of believing in multiple gods when 1 Timothy 3.16 says great is the mystery of godliness god was manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit seen by angels preached among the gentiles believed on in the world received up in glory so there is a great mystery to father son and holy spirit it's one of the innumerable mysteries you know that wow factor which makes us so in awe of God, but Pastor Gino denies the power thereof. Okay, he does not believe there is power in the blood of Jesus. That's why he teaches that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom when it clearly refers to unregenerates. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Wait, 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 wait. Romans chapter 16. They get chapter 18. verse. Romans chapter 16 and verse 18. They that are such, which mean they that are like this. 
For they that are such serve not they that are like Jesus this Christ. do not serve uh, Jesus Christ but their own belly but they looking at what they want out of it and by good words and by good words and fair speeches and good speech deceive the hearts of the simple they make fools out of you That's right. they look at all the people come together maybe about 30 40 or 50 or 60 of them and look at the pulpit of all these different fellas got they know everybody's different That's right. don't believe that don't believe that don't believe that and with good sounding words they say look at it all god people done came together Amen. and ain't none the bible says is serving for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus they Christ. They that are such are not serve. You can preach Jesus, that don't mean you're serving them. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Pastor, you preach Jesus in partiality. Okay, you're denying his power and you serve your own belly by collecting millions monthly in tithes. And you are rich. You have been grafted into the way of the Gentiles and you are a hypocrite. Because you omit so many scriptures that condemn the Gentiles. And one of the featured trademark teachings of a true apostle was to warn the Gentiles of the forthcoming judgments against the nations. That's right. I want to say that ain't Bible. Satan preached Jesus. Yes, he did. But he ain't serving them. That's right. Satan hate them. That's right. They that are such serve not our Lord Jesus. They that are such serve not our Lord Jesus. Do not serve Jesus. But their own bellies. Serve their own belly. And by good words. By good words. And fair speeches. Fair speech. Deceive the hearts of the simple. Trick it. You are convicted in your heart for being a sinner. Yeah. Look at the way you're living. You're partying. Some of you got a second husband. And your first husband's still living. You're living in adultery. Yet you say you're a Christian. That's right. You know Christian. You're an adulteress. That's right. Mm -hmm. I say, well, Pastor Jennings, my pastor told me most time when a preacher justified more than one wife, just to show you he got him. Oh yeah, Amen. a man can have more than one wife today. What used to get married? That's right. That's, huh? right. That's right. A man gets wake up and say, you know what? I'm getting another one. I'm getting another one. Now. I'm gonna get another one by five o'clock. I'll be back. He be with her for a couple of days. Ah, I'm gonna get another one. That's why they go to these dirty, no good religions that allow you to have a bunch of wives. And you know what these liars do? They use the Bible. Yes, they will. They go right to the Old Testament when it was allowed. There's a man, son, I think his name is uh, Dowie something, yelling about me in America. He says nothing wrong with having two wives, three wives, and four wives. Mm. He said the doctrine that Pastor Jennings is teaching that there's only one wife. He said that's a false doctrine. And he got over social media. He's supposed to be a pastor. And cussed me out. Mm. Cussing me out about multiple wives with a hat on. <laughs> with a golf cap on. He said you mother so and so and so and you got so and so. Oh I tell you they get mad when they come to giving up that spam. That's right. Huh? That's right. Why? They want all that meat to lay with. And they use the Old Testament where Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines and uh, Abraham had an Egyptian handmaid named Hagar. They go to the Old Testament. Uh -huh. But here one greater than Solomon came and the Messiah was he who the Hebrews call Yahashua HaMashiach. He was greater than Solomon and greater than Moses. And this is what he said in the 10th chapter of the book of Mark. Mark chapter 10, we're right at verse 11. You multiple wife lovers. That's why you folk love this, this meat religion. It's called a butcher religion. Huh? Like a butcher shop. That's right. Ham, hocks, fish, turkey, goat, everything. Everything. Meat religion. All them women just hanging up there just like on a meat rack. I've touched on this in other videos. Pastor Geno Jennings cannot condemn adultery without explaining the root causes of tainted bloodlines. And that's something, again, that the fallen angels were responsible for. Okay, and he can't teach adultery without explaining the power of the blood of Jesus for the remission of sins, which is the foundation in the new covenant that curtails. The tediousness of the law. Okay, the law of Moses had restrictions against leprosy, incest, impurities uh, from women. 
Okay. A Gentile could not even dwell amongst the Israelites under that covenant. So they could not be saved. But today the bloodlines are mixed. That's the whole purpose for Christ shedding his blood. But again, you don't even believe in the power of his blood unless you believe in the enemy that he has saved us from, Mr. Jennings. Because Pastor Dow uses that excuse of men in the Old Testament to have multiple wives. So you got to break all of that down. They have taken crafty counsel against your people. Now, what have they done? Taking cryptic. Taking no, crafty, crafty counsel against his people. See, this is how they lifted up their hands. Because they're taking crafty counsel against his people. So y'all has a people. So, if they were doing that then, how much more so now? They're taking crafty counsel against us. Are you following me? All of us born again Israelites. Now, often, Pastor Dow and Partial does preach about who the real Israelites are and the crafty counsel of the Gentiles to destroy Israel. But let's listen carefully. See, the whole agenda of this world is to make sure that you, your God, the imaginations of your thought, this way of life is eradicated from the face of earth. Listen. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. Y'all hear that? Come and let us do what? Cut them off. From being a what? A nation. So they, they have said. This is all the nations have said about Yah's people. Opposing him. They have said come and let us cut them off. From being a nation. And this is why Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 12 says. Woe to him who builds a town with bloodshed. Him who establishes a city by iniquity. You know, your high rises, your golf courses, your cathedrals, the cul-de-sacs. It was all built on the innocent bloodshed of slaves. It was Esau who introduced the diluted version of Christianity to teach once saved, always saved. The inclusion of all people in the rapture. And he teaches that because he thinks he's going to escape the judgments. But that's not the sequence of events according to scripture. Revelation chapter 13, 10 says he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 15 says the wicked must restore the pledge, give back what he has stolen, and walk in the statutes. That's the portion of the Gentile salvation that must be complete in order for them to inherit eternal life as servants and handmaidens. Okay? This is the real stuff an apostle is supposed to teach. And that's the reason why many of the real apostles were killed imprisoned, homeless, poorly clothed, you know, but Zeno, you wear a three-piece suit in the image and likeness of your oppressor. You're an imposter. The prophets and apostles in the scriptures confirm what I just said. Y'all understand that? Finish verse four. That the name of Israel may be that no the, more. That the name of Israel may be what? No more. In no remembrance. More. In remembrance. See, they started this way back in Mizraim. They started this way back in Mizraim when we were multiplying. And the Egyptians got so scared of us that they decided to put us in bitter bondage. The irony of all this is there was more of us than it was of them. Y'all getting this? Now we fast forward it all the way up until now. 
We're in America, now we're the least. Because the nations, they've got an agenda. And this is what their agenda is. When the Europeans came over here, they said, let us kill off all the indigenous people of this land so that they won't be the majority, but the minority. Y'all get this? We'll bring our culture. We'll bring our religion over here. And it will be the religion of this new nation called America. Okay. Pastor Dow preaches the truth right here. This is why Christ commanded these Edomites to sell everything they own and give it to the poor. The apostle James, he warned them as well in James chapter 5. Many Edomites go out and start churches because they want to be in charge of everything. But the scriptures say you will be the least in the kingdom if you repent and return what was stolen. For God will not be mocked. You reap what you sow. If Esau wants to witness to Judah, let him do so by cutting the check. Then you tell them Jesus loves them. That way people take you seriously. The people you oppress will take you seriously. You must understand that your forefathers passed down a generational curse. It was passed down to you that you are not to be trusted, except you return what was stolen. Because he went out of his way to manipulate the word of God for selfish gain. And that's how even your churches are built to this day. Now, why will Esau have to be servant? in the kingdom because his forefathers cannot outlive their sins so the children got to pay for it then there's this woman by the name of margaret singer you ever heard of planned parenthood she came up on the scene and of course what was she after the seed in the book of Jasher, they was already committing abortions. What were they after? The seed. What do you think they still after? The seed. Now you see the reason why we have to be set apart? Because you look at this wicked world. They got everything out there that is an abomination that is approved. And of course, what are they trying to do? They're trying to flood the whole world with Satan's seed. We got everything going against us from our own ignorance, our own past religious faults and failures. And we forgot all about the commandment from the very beginning which says be fruitful and multiply. And this is where Pastor Dow adds leaven to his message. He suggests that being fruitful and multiply directs us to have multiple wives to offset the millions of aborted fetuses. But if you listen carefully, he is on record stating that he wants to build an empire. Look, the Most High in these last days is looking past being fruitful and multiplying eventually all things come to an end. I mean, he's even looking past reparations. The sin debt for you Gentiles is outstanding. And there are many scriptures that say you will be paid back in blood. 